we want to determine the limit as x approaches infinity of the given rational function. There are several ways to determine limits at infinity. One method is a shortcut method based upon the degree of the numerator and denominator. So let's look at that first, and then we'll look at some general guidelines for determining limits at infinity of rational functions. Notice the degree of the numerator is degree three, and the degree of the denominator is also degree three. Now that we know this, let's take a look at the shortcuts for determining limits at infinity for rational functions. First, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is zero. That's not our case. The next possibility is our case. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we can use this shortcut here to determine our limit. But before we do this, let's take a look at the third case as well. The third case is, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function does not exist because it approaches either positive or negative infinity. But again, in our case, since the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, the limit is gonna be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. The leading coefficient of the numerator is 10. The leading coefficient of the denominator is negative four. Remember, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the highest degree. And again, because our numerator and denominator are both degree three, the limit will be equal to the ratio of leading coefficients, or in this case, 10 divided by negative four, which simplifies nicely to negative five halves. So this is how we can determine our limit using the shortcuts involving the degree, but we can also determine this limit using the general guideline given below. The general guideline for finding limits at infinity of rational functions is to divide each term in the rational function by the highest power of x in the denominator, and then once we do this, we can find the limit in the new form. So because the highest power of x in our denominator is x to the third, we'll go ahead and divide each term by x to the third to show another method for determining this limit. So we'd have the limit as x approaches infinity of 10x to the third divided by x to the third plus x squared divided by x to the third minus five divided by x to the third we're gonna divide all of this by eight divided by x to the third, minus four x divided by x to the third, and then finally minus four x to the third divided by x to the third. Now we'll go ahead and simplify each term. 10 x to the third divided by x to the third would be 10. X to the second divided by x to the third would be one over x. And then five divided by x to the third would stay five divided by x to the third, divided by eight divided by x to the third doesn't simplify. Four x divided by x to the third simplifies to four divided by x squared. So we have minus four divided by x squared. And then four x to the third divided by x to the third would just be four. Now we'll consider what's happening to each term as x approaches positive infinity, which brings us to one of the most basic concepts when determining limits at infinity of rational functions given here. The limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity of c divided by x to the power of r is always equal to zero where r is a positive rational number and c is any real number. So this is telling us if we have a rational function where the numerator is a constant and the denominator is increasing or decreasing without bound the function value is always approaching zero. To illustrate this, we can take a look at the graphs of two basic functions that fit this form, such as f of x equals one divided by x, and f of x equals one divided by x squared. Notice on both functions, as x approaches positive infinity, here and here, the function values approach zero, and as x approaches negative infinity, here, and here, again, the function values approach zero, therefore these limits are equal to zero. So going back to our example, let's now consider what's happening to each term as x approaches infinity. We'll notice this 10 here is not affected by x, but one divided by x does fit this form here, therefore this approaches zero. Minus five 
divided by x to the third also fits this form, so this approach is zero. So notice how the numerator is approaching positive 10. Now let's take a look at the denominator. Eight divided by x cubed fits this form, so this approach is zero as x approaches infinity. Minus four divided by x squared also fits this form, so this approach is zero. And then minus four is not affected by x. So notice how the only terms not approaching zero is the 10 and the negative four. The limit is equal to 10 divided by negative four, which again does equal negative five halves. So as you can see, there's more than one way to determine limits at infinity of rational functions. And then of course, to confirm these limits, it's always a good idea to graph the rational function and analyze the graph. So let's go ahead and do that as well. As x approaches positive infinity, we're moving right along the graph, which would be in this direction here. And it does appear that this function value, or y value, is approaching negative 2.5 or negative 5 halves. Also remember that since this limit does equal negative 5 halves, graphically, we do have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 5 halves, which would be here. Remember, a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote, but it cannot cross a vertical asymptote. I hope you found this explanation helpful.